Yeah, and you were saying those those male or female deers do a lot of damage. Some of them make it out alive in the accident. So, like, if you're driving down the road and the deer just comes out of nowhere, you just hitting it. And some of them, and some of the deers, they they actually are dead from the hit and injured. Or some of them get back up and walk off like nothing happened. It's a wild animal, you know. They could sustain impacts and they could sustain uh, environments and colds in a way that we cannot, you know. That's why they're classified as, as a wildlife animal, you know. And um, I've always been big on animals. If anything, I thought about actually making a TV show with some animals like, look at that croc right there, look at that, and just grab him by the neck. Go get that croc right there. Look at that anaconda. We're in Australia, you know? It's like, um, it just seems fun to me. Okay, grabbing the crocodile by, by the hand. I see those wildlife shows. They're crazy for going out there and actually touching the animal barehanded with the neck and, and stuff, especially the crocodiles. Cause when, when you touch them, they like to do that, that roly thing I, that will, I think it's crocodiles or alligators i think it's the alligator that does that it's a death row that's what they call it um they do that to kind of snap the bone out of whatever type of creature they're trying to eat so if they grab their arm it's a death row designed to twist that specific joint and bone out of place so they can snap it and eat it and when somebody is grabbed by a crocodile or an alligator and they're a human and let's just say they're a trainer but the crocodile snapped and the crocodile rolled the safest thing is to hold the crocodile and roll with him until yeah, somebody can help you or you can find a way to get him off of you but there, there are some wildlife people that who are by themselves with camera crews and it's just them wrestling the alligator and they have their hands on their neck i mean like on the back of their neck where their head is, and then they have their two legs wrapped on their back, and they're rolling with that, that alligator. And I was like, they're crazy for doing all that. I wouldn't even try that, because if I tried that, I would have got my hand or arm bitten off doing that. I got you, bro. Staten Island almost sounds like a place where you'll see like an alligator or crocodile. It's not <laughs> tropical here, so we're not going to see stuff like that on Staten Island unless somebody brings it. I don't, I don't even think that's legal. We already got snakes. Um, I haven't really seen snakes on Staten Island. Like, there is? Nah. I don't think so. But, like, like does anything happen on this island? There's probably, like, a worm that they call a snake. I, I haven't seen anything like that. I've been at the forest. We got... Jogging in Staten Island. I'm, I'm pretty sure we do got snakes because we got pet stores with snakes in it. I'm talking about, like, snakes in the natural environment and in the ecosystem of Staten Island. This is not Florida or Texas well, where you see it more down south. We probably do, but it's probably in an area that we don't probably go to. I believe snakes and animals like that survive better in tropical environments than they do in an environment that is like this. Even though crocodiles, I believe, do hibernate, alligators or crocodiles hibernate in the cold. They kind of stick their beak out of the water and they just go on, on an eternal sleep for that time. Of day, you know? Don't forget, even though we may not have snakes, but we do have water, and there are some snakes who can swim. They can uh, bring a, a different species of an animal to another part of the world, like Staten Island, and release them. Right. That's what happened in Florida with, I believe it was the pythons. They started taking over. It was a hurricane, actually, that released them, and these pythons just messed up the whole ecosystem they started eating right. all these animals and it just became a mess and now florida is paying people to hunt them down and to kill them or to catch them i believe how much do they they pay if you catch one i believe it's a couple hundred dollars you know but um hey you know i might want to sign up for that you know do some side work and also help the ecosystem and the environment because of course this is our country and South Florida also has uh, a rainforest with a lot of species to it. It's uh, a very tropical place. That's why it's very humid over there, because there's a rainforest in South Florida. Mm. 